So here's the thing. I, I've come to realize that this vision that I just talked about, the vision that I had, was a blessing. It was a blessing from God. Now, I'm not a religious guy. You know, I, I, I do believe in God, but the thing is, I don't go to church every week. My, 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 my wife gets on me about that. Okay? <laughs> I, I like to go more, but, you know, that kind of thing, but I, I do go to church. But I do know the stories of Moses and Noah. And in no way am I comparing myself with this historic events. But I do understand that if they are given a vision or they are given some notice to protect, then at that point, you have to do what you feel. And I'm letting you know that that vision came to me. And I, that's the reason why I couldn't stop doing it. I couldn't stop drawing. I couldn't stop sewing because I knew that I had to get this out. So as this was a blessing for me, it's also a burden. And the burden is that I can't tell enough people. I would have loved to have this room completely filled to tell my story, to say this product is out there, please get it out. There's not enough, there's not enough time in the day to get this information out. So, how do I feel? I feel like every time there's a possible shooting going on, something else happened, even though I've had, now let me tell you, I've done this, this is a year I've had this, a year. This is since the park, remember, this happened a year ago. So I've done whatever I can do. Now I'm a blue collar worker, I work for Costco, I'm a forklift driver, but this is what I do after. I push this because that's what I have to do. I feel like this has to get out here. So when it doesn't, or some other event happens, I feel like, did I do enough? Did I get the word out enough? Because I have prevented what happened. <clears throat> and I have people tell me, don't do that. Don't. You, you don't have anything to do with all this. What? That may be true, but I'm always going to feel that. The only thing that can alleviate my burden is that when I give the information, when I communicate, when I expand the knowledge of what's going on or what this device does, then I feel like now I've given you my burden. Unfortunately, you you have the burden this I have. Because what you do with that information defines you, right? Whether you can sit back and go, oh, you know, we'll wait and see what happens, or you can say, guess what? I get it. I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to let my educators know that it's out there. I'm going to let my administrators know that it's out there. That's what you do. And guess what? It's going to be tough. I, I, want, to, I want to take this to Congress. And, and we say, let's change the gun laws. Yes, we can change gun laws. That's going to happen. It's been happening. But in the meantime, what happens to our kids? What happens to that? I'm with you. Want to change gun laws? I'm here. Want to take, I mean, New Zealand did it, right? 48 hours after that shooting, right? 48 hours, it was gone, it was abolished. You know, and, and when I say abolished, I mean, you know, the, the machine, you know, the artillery, the, the semi automatics are all gone. Okay, that's now a law. Can't have it. It's law of hat. A little tougher to do it here. Okay? But this thing, it's like tough things. If it's going to stay in place, those things take time, right? They take focus. They take talking. It takes doing something about it. Rather than just assessing, yeah, we have a problem. Or saying, let's wait for our officials, our elected officials to do something. So it is tough. It is hard. It's not easy. But I did hear a quote. I love this quote. My favorite actor, I'm sure you may have heard it, okay? He quoted something, as I watched he quoted something about accepting the genome. His quote, if I can get it right, I'll let him get it wrong. His quote was, Ease is a bigger threat to progress than hardship. 
Ease is a bigger threat to hardship than progress. That means that, yes, you can sit down. It's easy to sit down and just assess. It's easy to not do anything and just wonder. But if the hard things that make things go in motion, right? We hope that there's people that are doing the hard things to get ourselves or get our children protected. So that's why this is a campaign for me. No school goes unprotected. That's my campaign. And I won't stop. I won't stop doing it because I believe in it. And so I'll, I'll, I'll walk the steep hill and I will climb the hard climb. Because that's what I can do. I can't solve all the other things. I can't solve why teachers don't get paid more. I can't solve why at-risk kids are a situation that need, uh, need more help. I can't do this because that's what I know. And that's what I want to do. If you want to stay with me, that's great. That's why I'll do that with you. And I'm standing and I'll make that movement. Because the one thing I do know is that I don't want to, I want to make sure that those 224 lives don't go silent. The 224 lives that we lost in the last nine years, I want to make sure they don't go forgotten. Because that's important. Sometimes people, it's in the news today, and it's gone tomorrow, and some people forget. But those are lives that are being lost because we're not ready, or we don't have a resolve for that. So, for me, I feel like we have to use our voices. I'm asking you to help. Reach out, talk. If you have to, you know administrators, you know superintendents, you know your, like I said, your governors, your congressmen. If you know these people, use your voice. We got to rebuild, we got to regain, and we got to reestablish the trust and confidence that make our education system one that our children can be proud of again. 